Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to use the midpoint to find the missing length. So you can see here in a couple of these examples, we have these variables x, y, a. Um, over here we don't, but we have some missing lengths. So we're going to use the idea of the midpoint to find our missing length or you know, missing variable to help us find the length. So just a quick little reminder here. If we're given two um, points that are going to be collinear, meaning they lie in the same line, let's say a and b, then the midpoint is going to lie right in the middle, and we'll call that c. The important thing that we're going to use um, in this video is that the idea that the c you know, basically bisects what we call our points a and b, meaning it splits it in half. right? So therefore, ac is going to be equal to the distance of cb. Those distances are equal. So whenever we find a midpoint, we know that both sides are equal, and that's very, very important. Um, we also know that you know, the distance from AC plus the distance from CB is equal to the distance from A to C, right? And the distance of AC or the distance from C to B is half the distance from A to B. Those are some important things that we're going to get into. So let's first just kind of discover, kind of learn about them um, without kind of the crazy equations and variables. And let's just kind of work on them with a basic understanding. So in this case, if I have AC, which is going to be 30, if I want to figure out what AB and BC is, well, I know that if here's AB, I know that um, half of that is going to be you know, 15, right? And well, since AC is congruent to CB, I know that lat length has to be 15 as well. So just using our understanding of our midpoint, if we're given one length in this scenario, and notice how all my points are collinear, right? They all lie in the same line. We can identify that those two points are going to um, get equal 15 and 15. In this case, we have DE is now equal to 8. Well, what's important about now that we know that in the midpoint, we know that EF is also going to be equal to 8. And then the distance from D to F is going to be those two values combined, which will be 16. Okay? So now, basically, we just kind of did two different modes. We talked about you know, giving the, the, lar the, seg the length of the segment, as well as just giving one angle from, or one from the midpoint to the endpoint, and then finding the, other, finding the other two values. So we can use these two ideas that we did over here to now use them with uh, problems that are going to be a little bit more confusing because now they have our variables x and y. However, the process and the idea is still exactly the same. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this example here. And let's kind of write in here. So if I know gh is x plus 5, g to h is x plus 5, and h to i is 2x, then what is g to i? OK, so we've got to be able to figure out what x is before we can figure those out. So the main important thing is we got to understand is remember that since h, oh, and I didn't mention to this, I, you know, usually on a problem they'll say you know, h is the midpoint, n is the midpoint, q is the endpoint, and R, k is the endpoint. So I'll just let you know, you have to tell you that those are the midpoints. Otherwise, you couldn't do this. But since I know this is the midpoint, I know those two are equal to each other. So therefore, I can write the equation x plus 5 is equal to 2x. If we didn't know they were the midpoint, we couldn't do this. All right? um, just to kind of save myself a little bit of time, I just kind of wrote them all. I didn't write each one as far as the midpoint. So now I just need to solve for x. So I subtract x on each side. And therefore, I get 5 is equal to x. So therefore, x is equal to 5. So therefore, to find each one of my lengths, all I really need to do is figure out one of these. right? You don't need to solve for both of them, because once you know the value of 1, you just need to double that to find the other side. So for instance, um, you know, and I'll just kind of prove that to you. If I had 2 times 5, that equals 10. That means this equals 10. And let's just double check it just for this one case. right? So therefore, you know that this is equal to 10, and this is equal to 10. Therefore, the distance from g to i is going to equal 20. But again, since these are always going to be the same, from now on, let's just find one and then double it to find the other. All right, so in this case, um, again, we have jk is 5y plus 13. kl is going to be 5 minus 3y. Now, basically, what we need to do is go ahead and solve uh, for y. So we'll set up another equation like we did in the last one. 5y plus 13 equals 5 minus 3y. And then we'll just basically go ahead and solve for um, our y. So I'll add a 3y. So I have 8y, and then I'll subtract a 13. Now let's just do the 8y is equal to 8y, sorry, plus 13 equals 5. 8y plus, ah, oh, jeez. So we have 8y plus 13 is equal to 5. Then subtract a 13, subtract a 13, and therefore that's going to be 8. So therefore we'll have 8y is equal to a negative 8 
divide by 8, divide by 8, y is equal to a negative 1. Okay. Now we can just go and plug this in there. So I can do 5 times negative 1 plus 13. And we can see that that's going to be negative 5. So that's going to equal, again, 8. And let's just double check to make sure. If I plugged in a negative 1 for y, that would be a positive 3. So plus 8, that would equal 8. So therefore, if that's 8 and that's 8, that means my length from j to l is going to be 16. Basically going to be the double. Um, all right, so in our next example, we have 5a plus 1 is equal, to, and as mn is 5a plus 1, but then m to o is 42. So now we don't have two sides that set equal to each other, but now we have one expression, and then we have the whole length. Now, again, we got to go back to what we understood as far as when we had a problem similar like that with numbers. And I think a lot of times when you're doing problems like this, if you get stuck, go back to the problems that were very simple that had the numbers and relate to them. Here, we are only given a length. Um, we we're actually we're only given one of those lengths. And what we did is we doubled it to get 16. So in reality, all I really have here is 2 times 5a plus 1, right? That's doubling it, multiplying by 2. Because really, if you have 5a plus 1 here, that means this would have to be 5a plus 1 as well. So instead of doing 5a plus 1 plus 5a plus 1 equals 42, you could just multiply by them too equals 42. Now let's go and see the math. So we have 10a plus 2 equals 42. Uh, subtract 2, subtract 2. 10a is equal to 40. Divide by 10, divide by 10. a is equal to 4. So now we figured out a is equal to 4. And what are we trying to find? I didn't even write it down. We are trying to find no. But it really doesn't matter. Whatever no is, or whatever mn is, that's going to be the same thing as no. So we know a is equal to 4. So let's just do 5 times 4 plus 1. 5 times 4 is 21 plus 1 is, no, 5, plus, 5 times 4 is 20 plus 1 is 21. And then let's make sense. Does the, if that's 21 and that's 21, does 21 plus 21 equal 42? Yes. So we're good to go there. Um, ah, OK. Good point. Ah, I think I do have those. Yes, I do. OK. Um, in this example, we have p, q, q, r. So in this example, um, it's very similar to the other one. We have qr is going to be 7x minus 15. And this one, we have pr, which is the distance from both of them, is equal to 33. So we're going to do the same thing. We have 7x minus 15. Um, actually, let's just do it. Let's do it the other way. So if here's 7x minus 15, since these are the same, right? since q is the midpoint, that means that 7x minus 15 is over here as well. So I'm going to write this one out the long way. Just so you can see, you can do it multiplied by 2. But if that didn't make sense to you, hopefully this way does. And that's supposed to equal 33. OK, so now you can combine your like terms. So 7x, um, you can only have, combine the 7x and the 7x and the negative 15 and the negative 15. So 7x plus 7x is going to be 14x. Minus 15 minus 15 is going to be a negative 30 equals 33. Add 30. Add 30. 14x equals 63. Divide by 14. Divide by 14. And uh-oh, we have an issue. Um, the 63 or 60, 14 does not evenly divide into 16. So I'll just go ahead and use my calculator. And we'll kind of get a 63 divided by 14. And we get 4.5. So we'll just leave that, um, leave that as a decimal. A lot of times you can reduce that as a fraction. Um, 4.5 divided by 2, no. 7, yeah, you could divide by 7 on top and bottom. So let's divide this by 2. So x equals, so x equals 63 over 14. 7 goes into the numerator uh, 9 times. And then uh, 7 goes into the denominator. So you could also write this as 9 halves. Or x equals 4.5. Okay, So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use the midpoint to find your missing length um, and variable. Thanks.